making sure the environment encourages and nurtures the talent, making sure there's a consistency in the values, there's a consistency in, in, in what the company stands for. The culture, the corporate culture is also very important. The goals and objectives, uh, the missions, you understand. Some of those things we term soft are, are really not that soft, right? Um, apart from companies driving at technical goals, we think mission goals, you know, some of those value goals are incredibly important, right? For companies or countries to be able to retain the kinds of talent because those things determine the environment, right? And the environment is important for talent if it is to perform or produce. We always talk about mobility from the angle of relocation and with that, you know, there's not much to be done. Um, you know, it's really managing the people you have on ground and making sure that you get the best value from them um, and just giving them the best benefits that your company can possibly give. And making sure another angle that we don't discuss is internal mobility. Um, so we see a lot of times, you know, people are moving out of the country, but have they really maximized their value in your company? You have opportunities for people to move across departments. I'm a product of mobility, and I, I have to say that, you know, that made me stay in that company for much longer. It helped me develop my skills, skills that my current employer now enjoys so much because I'm not, you know, I'm not an expert in only, I don't have expertise in only one field, but in multiple fields. I think you, if you give an employee that exposure, you have a better chance of retaining them. Um, as opposed to just in one function, especially if they're interested in moving out to explore the fields. Yeah. There's been quite a few changes. You know, like I said during the session, you've seen that transition from, you know, admin, back office, personnel management, like we used to call it in those days, to um, what we have now, where HR is a strategic business contributor. Right, or what I like to call um, a trusted business advisor first before their HR people. So you've seen that increased importance of HR. And on the business side, there's also been a bigger realization from industries, from companies, that the people, they can't relegate the people part of their growth and strategy to the back end or of secondary importance. So therefore, it's important that they continue to work with HR very closely to drive their business objectives. I think the most obvious you know, thing is automation and the advancement of technology. Uh, a, lot of, um, a lot of things are automated, a lot of processes, systems, policies are automated now. A lot of practices and the way which uh, people work, everything is automated, digitized in one way or another. Uh, the second thing is I would say that now there's a lot of focus on people-centered um, practices, people-centered activities, and businesses are starting to recognize more businesses, because I think some already did, more businesses are starting to recognize that people are really the building blocks of their, of their companies as well. So if they want to do anything, you know, they have to make sure that people are happy first, are satisfied first, are productive first before they can focus on anything else. So, and I think the, the third one I would, I would chip in is more, there's a lot of focus around diversity, equity, inclusion as well. So we're seeing um, people prioritize that, people recognizing that, you know, um, diversity and inclusion is not just a numbers game and it's not limited to just gender or age, for instance. And, you know, the world is a lot smaller. So um, HR practitioners, people practitioners will have to do a lot to attract and retain the right people. You know, it's a talent market, as we're seeing, compared to what it was, um, you know, 10, 15 you know, years ago. So lots of focus on culture and creating the right environment for people to thrive.